actual stars <laughs> are aligning for a spectacular event in the sky. People across the United States will have a front row seat for a solar eclipse one month from today. And for most people, the sun's rays will only partially be blocked as the moon slowly creeps in front of it. But some places are in for a total eclipse and we'll see day turn to night. It's a sight the U.S. will not see for another 20 years. We are joined now by NASA expert Nikki Rail to learn more about this exciting celestial event. So Nikki, I've seen partial eclipses, never a total solar eclipse. I know that the path of totality is actually going through parts of Pennsylvania. So why should people drive out there and take a look at this? Well, it's an incredible event, you know, with everything does need to line up just right for the moon to fully block out the light of the sun. Um, in this eclipse, we're gonna so lucky to have the path being all the way from, you know, Texas up through uh, Vermont. And in this, we will have uh, up to four and a half minutes of totality to see the prime event, to have really the light visually blocked out, you do need to get on that exact path of totality to have that moment of, um, of you know, lack of visible light and like darkness. It's an incredible event and I hope that folks will be able to see partials from home or get out to where they can see a more total eclipse very close by. And it sounds like precision and timing will be key in seeing this. How is April's solar eclipse different from the one we saw in 2017? So in 2017, it was also a total solar eclipse. We're really lucky this time, though, that the path of totality is a bit uh, longer across the uh, contiguous United States and wider. So 31 million people, about double the, fo the people that were able to view it last time, are going to be in the path of totality. We also have a four and up to four and a half minutes of totality, uh, depending on where you are in the path, which is quite a bit longer than the last eclipse we were able to experience. Now, Nikki, we know that things are different when the totality is experienced. Uh, shadows are different, animals are different. Sometimes people get really emotional. So what should we look for and what are scientists gonna be looking for when this happens? Yeah, well, you're absolutely right. It's an, a fantastic moment to take stock in how much the sun impacts our lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, the sunlight and night cycle, daylight and light cycle. We are really excited to have observations from viewers and citizens around what's happening within, you know, your neighborhood, wildlife in your neighborhood and what you're seeing. And we at NASA um, and many academic institutions across the country are very interested in being able to visualize the corona or the outermost atmosphere of the sun, which we can't usually see when there's so much visual light. And there's a number of science investigations we'll be doing during the eclipse and as we're transitioning in and out of totality with uh, jets and sounding rockets to visualize these events. And I know in the past when we've had a partial eclipse, I remember there were um, for my son's school, they had little glasses and things like that because you're told not to look mm. directly at it. So <laughs> how can people view this total eclipse safely? Yeah. So that's a great uh, safety is first and foremost. You do need either to have solar glasses or a solar filter or use an indirect viewing method when you're transitioning in and out of totality. The only time that you can look safely at the sun is when there is no visible light and it is really quite dark. As soon as you start seeing the bright light available, you need to use these solar filters, solar glasses or something like a pinhole projector, a colander from your kitchen or even using mm. your hands or the spaces between trees to see what the that the sunlight is reflecting like on the ground. It just showed the shadows that are formed and they look like little suns. It's really, really cool. Yeah. I remember the partial eclipse back in the 2017. I think I might still have those glasses from back then, so I'll have to go digging for them. One more thing, um, you can either watch it or you can also do some science stuff. How can people participate that way, Nikki? Yeah, so um, if you visit go.nasa.gov slash eclipse2024, you'll see some resources. We have incredible citizen science projects we'd love for you to participate in, from Globe Observer to make observations about what you're seeing and where you are, Sun Sketcher to help actually visualize cloud cover and what you're seeing from the shape and size of the sun, to even um, uh, soundscapes, where what are the sounds of nature in your neighborhood and what are, things what are things happening around your house? So we hope you'll join with us to do science to help us better understand the event and also um, um, see some of the things that people around the country are experiencing. All right, we're looking forward to it. Mo one month away. One month from today. Nikki Rail from NASA, thanks for joining us and have a great weekend. Thank you.